Let's talk about the use of a podium. And really the first question we have to ask is, do we even need a podium? Our goal is to make sure that we can see every member of the ensemble clearly and that every member of the ensemble can see us clearly. We also want to make sure that we are essentially high enough that we can put our conducting in a good position. We don't want to be in uncomfortable positions while we conduct. So this is basically a function of two things. First is how large the ensemble is. If it's a very large ensemble, means there's three, four, five, six rows and maybe a percussion section, it's likely that we're going to need a podium because otherwise the back rows are not going to be able to see us clearly. They're not going to be able to connect with our eyes, with our right hand, with our left hand, and we're not going to be able to see them clearly and comfortably. We're going to have to strain to make eye contact to show them gestures. So a podium can help there. If you're very, very tall, you may not need a podium, but short folks um, like me tend to need a podium because we want to be high enough so we can connect. These are the two kind of issues that kind of factor in whether we can see them, they can see us, and whether our conducting is, a good, is, is in a good position. The one exception to this would probably be a large choral group because they're usually on risers or some sort of platform, which means they're already high enough so we can see them and they can see us. In those situations, you don't need the podium necessarily. So once we're on the podium, what do we do once we're up there? Well, you don't necessarily have to stay completely grounded and completely still. You're allowed to move a little bit. I know one of my problems is that I tend to kind of walk maybe a little too much. It's something I have to be aware of. But on the other end, if you feel that you're only kind of stuck to the ground and you're never moving at all, you're allowed to move a little bit. Generally, side to side or lateral movement is more effective than front to back movement mostly because front to back movement is not really getting us closer to anybody. It doesn't even, you almost can't even tell I'm moving front to back if you're in the back row. But if I move to the left, all of a sudden I'm much more connected with the folks over here. If I move to the right, I'm all of a sudden much more connected with the folks who are over here. It doesn't mean you can't move forward, but it's not really bringing us closer to the trombones necessarily. So if you have a rectangular podium, you might want to put it so the long way is lateral as opposed to front to back. All right, let's talk about can you even get off the podium? Like, when do you get off the podium? Well, it can be during a piece. It can be during a rehearsal. You don't have to stay on the podium during a, during a concert. You probably want to. But during a rehearsal, you might say, well, we're just conducting something. We're rehearsing something as a large group. Now I'd really like to work with just these two violins. If you want to make a little bit closer connection to those players and have a kind of a more intimate rehearsal environment, hop off the podium. Just step off and say, let's deal with this issue here. Can we hear those two notes? Can we fix this rhythm? Flutes, let's see what's going on here. You can even move back. Trombones, can we hear what's going on and walk through the orchestra? We'll walk around the ensemble and connect with them. The, at the very least, it's going to energize those players because they're used to being so far from con the conductor and all of a sudden someone comes back and says, okay, let me hear you guys. I, I am right here. I'm as connected with you as I am with the folks in the front row. This is especially useful for percussion. And for percussion. They're always in the back. And they've got all sorts of mallets and um, uh, instruments that they're using that we might want to say, can you show me what kind of beater you're using that? Can you show me what kind of mallet you're using for that? And uh, manage it a little bit more uh, closely that way. The podium can also be a classroom or rehearsal management tool. A lot of conductors will use this as a way of signaling that something important is going to happen, that they're going to begin a segment of a rehearsal. So they might begin the rehearsal off the podium, and there might be announcements, there might be some tuning, people might be getting set up, and as soon as they step on the podium, this is the visual signal that we're about to begin. And you can use that same technique in the middle of rehearsal. Let's say we're done conducting uh, a piece and we're going to move on to another piece. Okay, we hop off the podium, uh, we allow things to reset, people change their music, change their read, whatever happens to be. We realize we're ready, everybody else is ready, we stand on the podium, it signals that we're ready to go. Another time to hop off the podium is if we're doing non-musical things and we, uh, for a, a more extended period of time. I know if I'm conducting and rehearsing something that's all about the music, 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 and then we need to have a discussion about something else, I'll often just step off the podium in front and talk to the ensemble as if we're in an environment where we're just having a conversation. Because that podium does create a little bit of an artificial barrier and we don't always want that. We might say, okay, let's just discuss something. Okay, that's good. Now. Let's make some music and be back on the podium. It's just a couple of factors to consider when using or not using a podium.